Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Someone under my last video suggested that I should look into Freezer and try to rebuild it inside the grid here. This is how it looks like. It's your typical buffer repeat effect. You draw in here some, um, some bars where you define how many repeats you want for each step, right? You have 16 repeats, 10 repeats, left and right channel. There's a smoothing option here. There's a bit of filtering, so nothing too crazy. Um, there are already a lot of plugins on the market that do exactly the same thing. Uh, I, for myself, use Glitch all the time, which is out for 20 years and does kind of the same thing. Um, so this is the newest, um, the newest version here, the newest Glitch buffer on the block. And we try to replace, uh, replace it inside of Bitwig Studio. So here I've had some kind of drum loop. Okay, so we put an FX grid on that. In here we have an audio input, audio output, and we use a recorder. We record here basically the audio input, and we do this every quarter note. So the triggers actually doesn't send out triggers. It sends out gates. And we need triggers. So we talked about this, the triggers actually has the wrong name. It should, it, sh it should be called gates or something like that. So we take your length module, pull this down to 0 0.1 milliseconds. So now we have triggers here. And then we use a knot, basically invert this. Instead of having a gate low all the time and then just a small short trigger, now we have a long gate high and a short burst of gate low. So basically exactly the opposite. And we take the signal and use that as a recording signal. So now we record basically every quarter note for exactly one quarter note, okay? And you can see this here, the red dot, we just record this. So now we can take the easy route and say, let's say, um, use another triggers module here this one and we do exactly the same thing um wait a minute go in that okay and we can just repeat what we have here in the buffer right so we can change the trigger here with the step mod steps mod let's say 16 notes um and then paint in here some things and then we use a value, a value knob, and we modulate here basically the triggers timing. Let's go to, um, I don't know, 32 or 31 actually, plus one. Um, let's actually type it in, 31. And then we modulate here this value thing. And then we can say, logic bigger than so every time the value is bigger than zero because the second input check is empty right every time this is bigger than zero send out the gate and we use this gate to switch actually here this to the um, output of the recorder so every time here this is zero take the dry input so don't repeat at all just use the dry input and pass it through the output here and every time we have here a bar right the value is above zero we switch this to one or to gate high and then we switch to the buffer effect and then we also modulate here the triggers So this is the easiest way of doing exactly that. Um, we can define bars here and each of these bars, the higher it gets, right? The more you repeat uh, from one up to 32. You can also go higher if you want to, to 64 here, maybe uh, 63 plus one. OK, 
okay? So this is the first idea. So it's the easiest solution, basically. We just record here, and then we use triggers and modulate the triggers to change the beat repeat effect, right? So this is version one. Uh, we just duplicate this here, disable this, and um, do another version of this. So instead of modulating here the triggers module, um, we use predefined ones. So we use a merge. So right with this modulation uh, solution here, you can have three triggers, six triggers, seven triggers, and so on. So a lot of in between that maybe doesn't sound that good when you repeat it. So what I want to do here is basically to use predefined ones. So it's, let's say trigger one, then we use here four triggers, then we use maybe eight, and then we use here 16. So you can make it pretty, pretty easy for you uh, to make like a, a quantized version of this. We don't need to modulate this here. Um, then we modulate here the value already, so we can use the value here to switch uh, through that. We also maybe want to use interpolation in nearest, so we switch from one to the other. And we can also use this use linear here, so we have like maybe this retrigger and this retrigger at the same time. Uh, it doesn't make sense. So switch this to nearest. Uh, let's listen to that one. So right, so we, now with these bars here, you can't select anything between eight retriggers and six retriggers. You basically quantize. You have uh, one, four, eight, 16, 32, and 64. So maybe the output is more, more pleasant to you, right? If you want to have specific retriggers. So this is another version of this. In my opinion, this is um, the best or the easiest one to use just predefined things here. And if you get bored of these equal um, um, <clears throat> retriggers, you can dial in anything in between. You can even say, let's say um, I use a clock quantizer here, right? And then um, use a... La, 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 la another triggers here and use 16 notes here. 32 and 64 doesn't make any sense now, but you can choose here then something odd like three and seven here and then put everything everything through a clock quantizer and you get these kind of more like rhythmic, interesting um, repeats. So that's something you can do in the grid that you can't do in Freezer, right? So you can extend basically on this idea inside of grid. This is all this is why I say try to do it inside of the grid because you can extend you know you know you can make this effect more unique to your own uh, sound in a way that you can't with the VST plugin. It's it's just you know predefined and it's it works how it works in uh, for everyone but inside of the grid you can extend and modify and um, make it sound a bit different. Okay so um, this is another solution. Let's duplicate this here again, switch this off. And with the last version, I want to use, uh, instead of triggers, I do it differently. Um, so let's put this over here. I think I don't also don't need to do this. So with this, uh, in this version, we want to use a scalar. And with the scalar, we not only get a trigger out here, we also get the face out and we can do something very interesting with the face out here. So I'm using um, the device face input here. So now with this uh, input here, we get basically one trigger, two triggers, right? You can see this here as an output, uh, but we also have the reset here. Um, let me see. So every time the face goes down to zero, we want to re-trigger or reset the scalar. So we are exactly on the grid. So we do this here. And then we want to change here the ratio also to predefined things. So we use a constant 
and put this here into the merge. So one and modulator out here. And we modulate here the ratio exactly by one. Okay. And then we go down to zero here. So when we select basically the first input, we modulate exactly by one. So we get one repeat. Um, the second here gets, let's say four. And this one gets eight. So we do the same thing as before, but instead of the triggers, we use basically um, the scalar um, 64. Okay. Okay, so now we basically modify here with a step mod um, this value. Um, this value then changes here to constant. The constant then modulates the scalar here to the exact right ratio. And then we can take this here as an input for the repeater. It should sound like the same as before. I put this over here. Okay, so now that it sounds like before, we can now use also here the phase output signal. And this is special because if you see here the phase output, it, it's basically a ramp now for every repeat. So every repeat gets a ramp and we can use now a curve, curves uh, modulator or LFO and kind of drive it with this phase so let's put this here to hold and then use this as an input, go 100%. Um, and now we can reset the curve and we have kind of a shape now that we, that we can shape for each repeat. And we can use this output signal here for shaping the volume of the output of the recorder, right? So now every repeat gets this shape. So let's say you don't want to repeat or freeze buffer um, a drum loop. You need to have some kind of smoothing setting for like melodies or pet sounds, right? You don't want you or you want to get rid of the initial click and the fade out here at the end, right? So you can say, I want to s slowly fade in and slowly fade out for each repeat. So you get rid of these clicks. So it's maybe more interesting if you want to use that on uh, melodies or on pet sounds and so on. And I think here in this uh, freezer thing, you have also here this smoothing setting. I think it does exactly that. Um, it brings in a ramp at the beginning, at the end of each repeat, yeah, you know, to get rid of these clicks. But you can also create yeah, more like creative effects like I showed you. Do maybe something like that and then make it pretty short. So this is also something you can't do in Freezer, but you can in Bitwig Studio because you have access to all these signals and you can modify these signals in all kinds of different directions. Like, um, you know, that's, that's why I like it or that's, that's why I prefer the grid most of the times for stuff like this. Um, so I have three versions here. That's the easiest one, the beginning, um, just trigger to record and re-trigger to play it back. Then here, um, the second one where we use a merge and switch through predefined three triggers. Um, it's also easy to set up. And the third one here where we use basically a scalar. Um, and with the scalar, we get the phase signal. And with the phase signal, we can also make a volume shape for each partial or for each retrigger. Um, so three versions of this, um, how I would do it. Um, if you want to create basically here this for stereo for the left and the right channel, um, I think you 
just need to duplicate everything. Um, you need two step modulators here. Um, then you need a stereo split, right? You need to split this into left and right channel here, the input. Uh, put the left channel into recorder, right channel into a recorder, and then repeat left and the right channel separately. But I think you don't want to do that, actually. It's, I mean, if you want to do it, you can do it. Um, but I want to show it, don't want to show it in this video, just to make this tutorial not too complex. Uh, I think you get the idea how it works. And I put these uh, three presets here onto my Patreon so you can download it. And if you don't want to subscribe to the Patreon, you can just repeal it from the video. It, I mean, it's not that, you know, it's not super complicated. So this one here is pretty easy. And I think that's it for this video. So leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye.